the next step of the brass management process is ultrasonic cleaning. Now, I did not have ultrasonic cleaning when I first started this process. This was a budget process for me, as it is for quite a few people that don't have just a ton of extra money to throw around. So we need to be very practical about that. This was a product that I actually eventually upgraded to, and I'm very glad that I did. I recommend it. If it is in your budget, I definitely recommend it. Uh, I'll throw some uh, links to these types of products in the description to get you started. Uh, this particular one is the Lyman TS2500. Uh, I don't know that it's any better than any others. I thought it was probably a good idea that it was made by uh, a company that makes reloading components, but I really don't think it matters all that much. It does have a built-in heater, which is helpful. One of the next things to consider before starting the ultrasonic cleaning process is what type of product you're going to use. What media are you going to use in the ultrasonic? Uh, there are commercial uh, products out there. In fact, I literally have never purchased a commercial ultrasonic cleaning uh, product, and I never will because uh, I started with a, a home recipe, and I don't think I'm ever going to look back. Uh, if you look closely on this uh, one-gallon water jug, you can see the recipe right there. One thing that I have removed is the salt uh, because I had a little bit of a concern uh, with the occasional gun part that I might clean in this machine. I just wanted to remove that. Uh, from a molecular standpoint, I think the salt probably is beneficial cleaning the brass, but I did not notice a marked change when I removed the salt from the recipe. So basically for a one gallon jug, my recipe is four cups of vinegar, four tablespoons of dish soap, and then I just fill the water to the top. I don't even measure the dish soap anymore. Basically, I have a cheater line down here that shows where I fill the vinegar to. And here's a little pro tip for you. Put the vinegar in first, and then fill the jug the rest of the way with water, and then put your soap in, so that you don't end up creating a bunch of bubbles and have a big mess and potentially change your recipe up a little bit. Okay, now that we've completed the decapping process and we have set up our ultrasonic cleaner, it's time to get started with the cleaning process. So, as you can see, we've got our little pile of 357 brass, nice and dirty. And I'm going to hold this here for a minute because we're going to do a little bit of before and after. So, I mean, this brass isn't terrible, but it is definitely dirty. And uh, those of you that are just getting into reloading will learn. Those of you that have been doing it for a while already know that there's a great deal of pride in terms of uh, how clean your brass is if you're really getting into this process. You have to ask yourself whether or not it really makes a difference, but I like to make it pretty shiny so that my ammo looks good. And when I open up my box of ammo that I've loaded, it looks good, it's smooth, and it runs well, especially in uh, any semi-automatic weapons. Okay, so here we go. Basically, it's very simple, nothing to it. Just gonna pour our brass in there. And we're gonna take our proprietary mixture and we're going to pour this in just to the level that it reaches the top of the brass. You don't have to get too carried away with that just so it's over the brass like so. Place our lid on top and on this particular machine we've got four buttons the on button, the off button, the set button and the temperature control button. So first off we turn on the temperature control and all that's going to do is it's going to it's going to heat that stuff up as it goes. It does take a little while. I usually don't wait for it. I don't think it makes the biggest uh, difference, but it will warm up. And basically, we have four settings. Uh, well, I guess five. So we've got uh, 90 seconds, 180, 280, 380, and 480. So we're going to set that up to 480, and my target is anywhere from three to four cycles. So if we just hit on, you'll hear it start going. And now that machine is working its magic, getting into all the little nooks and crannies that otherwise would be difficult to get to. And we're going to let that run for four cycles. Okay, so we've come back to the ultrasonic cleaner after four cycles. And it's nice and warm. That heater has been working. We're going to lift this tray out. I like to kind of shake them off a little. And as you can see, right off the bat, there's a real obvious difference in how clean these cases are already. Nice and shiny. 
Now, here's a little trick. This little guy right here is a lingerie uh, laundry bag. And I use this all the time. I use this for picking up casings at the range. Uh, it's nice and strong. It's mesh, as you can see. And uh, allows the cases to bounce around in there and the dirt to fall out so I don't get dirt all over my table when I bring it back. And it's also very good for clean, uh, drying out these cases. So we can just dump these cases right in this bag. And I've got several options here. If uh, you've spent any time on any YouTube pages, you've probably seen lots of examples of how people suggest that you can dry cases in your oven, and you certainly can at low temperatures. Um, I live uh, in southern Arizona, and so it gets pretty hot here in the summertime, and it's also very dry. So if I actually set an entire tray, or rather this bag right here out in the sun on the sidewalk for a little while, it'll actually dry out pretty quick. Another option is to simply hang that bag in front of a fan, um, or even this small batch, I could just blow it out with the air compressor. So you've got lots of options. The only thing I'll tell you is it is a good idea to just get them uh, pretty dry, I would say all the way dry, before we move on to the tumbling process.